Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create your own custom white noise sweeps to use as special effects or transitions in Logic Pro. Although this technique should work in any DAW that has similar plugins as Logic, and you have some way to generate white noise, either with a synthesizer or a noise generator or signal generator. So sometimes I get sick of searching through noise effects samples, and I opt to just make my own. And this can be pretty easily done, and your noise sweep samples can be saved for later, and you can start building up your own custom library of sweep effects. But first, let me show you a few examples of what I'm talking about. So you can see that I have three different sweep samples here, all with different dynamics. Let's give these a listen. So like I said, they are three different samples, all created the same way with different dynamics. In terms of how quickly the sound fades up to its maximum value, and also how quickly or slowly the sound fades out from the peak value. So you can see this first one here is used more like a, a crash, just like a quick noise crash. This one's more of a short buildup leading into this next section here. And the last one still has sort of a short buildup, but a long tail on the end of it. So typically shorter buildups are great for quick transitions like this. You can have longer buildups that build tension, and you can also layer these with other riser type effects to build tension in between sections. So there's a lot of applications for these. Okay, so I've deleted my sweep effects and I'll start from scratch and show you how to create these. So first and foremost, I like to start off with a software instrument. So Logic has a very convenient instrument for this. You can just find it under the instrument tab on any software instrument track. Go down to utility and then select test oscillator. And you can load this in mono or stereo. I'm gonna stick with mono, although we will be converting the signal chain to stereo with some reverb and other effects. So by default, this loads up a sine wave as the test oscillator. But for this application, I want to choose white noise. Now, you can bypass the plugin, and you can also adjust the level of the noise here. But what I like to do is I actually like to load up the gain plugin on the channel strip. And then I'm going to use the gain plugin to actually control the level of the noise. So I'll go ahead and turn that back on. And now what I can do is just use the gain plugin to control how much noise I hear. So the way we're gonna make this work is we're going to add effects to this white noise to make more out of it. First and foremost, I like to add reverb. You can use any reverb you like, including the ones included in Logic. I'm going to use this eventide reverb called Black Hole, and I'm gonna convert mono to stereo with this and I'm gonna set the mix at 100%. So now if I pull up the gain here, and you may need to go in here and trim the input and output signal if we're causing clipping with the noise. But you can see essentially what I'm doing is just rolling up the volume, getting to a peak spot, and then quickly rolling it down. And depending on the curve and duration of the fade in and fade out, you can create different effects. So for example, if I want to just write in some automation here, I'll just press A to show my automation. Then on my automation parameter here, I'll go to the gain plugin and then select the gain parameter. And now what I can do is I can draw in automation for this gain parameter within the gain plugin. Now you might think, well, why not just do it with the volume fader on the track? Well, it's because we want the volume control to be before the effects. So what I could do is I could write in some automation here to sort of make this build up. And actually eight bars is probably a bit too long. So I'll set this to four bars. 
And then maybe I'll have one bar where this fades out to nothing. And what you'll find is if you use linear shapes for this, you're not going to get as drastic of effect. You're going to get a really sort of boring effect because most of the action is happening up here. Almost nothing is happening down here. So what I like to do is I like to grab the automation curve tool, and then I'll use this to create more of like a exponential growth curve here. And then I can do the same here. So I can... Work with some non-linear shapes. If you want this to be quicker, you could pull it down. If you want it to be not so quick of a fade out, you can pull this up a bit. Or you could even use multiple curves here. I could have three bars of build up and then one last ramp up at the very end. Maybe something like this. And again, if I wanted this to fade more quickly, I could create more of an exponential fade as opposed to a logarithmic fade. And if you're not familiar with using the automation curve tool, you can drag up and down to create logarithmic or exponential fades, and left and right will give you two different S-curve shapes. And again, you could extend out this automation as well to create a longer decay or release here. So that's how you control the fade in, fade out, the overall dynamics. Other things I like to add to this are filters and saturators. And really, whatever effects you decide to add to this are up to you. This is just the basic setup using a gain plugin and a reverb. And you can swap this out for any reverb you like as well. So for example, what I'll do is after the gain plugin or before the gain plugin, you can try it out in different areas of the signal chain to see what effects you can get. So I'm gonna start with the auto filter and in the auto filter, I'm gonna turn off the LFO and envelope and I'm gonna mostly focus on the cutoff and resonance controls. And I'm gonna be using a high pass filter here. So this is a filter that cuts out the low end. And I could also bring in the resonance for a nice sweeping effect. You just have to be careful how much resonance you use. Because at a certain point, the resonance will actually start to self-oscillate. So I generally don't pull this up too much past 50% for something like this. Now you can leave the distortion unit in if you want a bit of gentle saturation. But another thing you can do is you could add in the Exciter plugin for another level of saturation. So I'll go ahead and do that as well with the harmonics knob. And perhaps I'll put the filter after the exciter instead. Now, one way to approach this is just to simply automate all of the parameters that you want on the track. So for example, here I've automated the gain, the harmonics in the exciter plugin, as well as the cutoff and resonance in the auto filter plugin. So that's definitely one way you can approach this, but I actually like to have control over all four of these parameters with a slider or knob on my MIDI controller, and then I can play in these effects in real time and record them in real time. The way I prefer to do this involves using the Scripter MIDI effects plugin. So I'll go ahead and load that up on my white noise software instrument track. And the script I'm gonna use in here is called the MIDI two plugin parameters script. And I've demonstrated this in a previous video, but essentially what this does is it allows you to learn a MIDI input, so like a knob or fader on your MIDI controller, so a continuous controller. I'm gonna be using my Monogram Creative Console for this. I'm just gonna be using one of the sliders on that, but any keyboard controller with knobs and faders should do as well. So I'll just click Learn MIDI Input, 
and then I'll move that knob or fader on my MIDI controller and you can see it learns it. It's learned CC number 22. Now what I can do is assign my output targets. So first and foremost, I want to learn the gain knob. So you just click learn plugin parameter, click on that control and then move the MIDI controller to assign that knob. And you can also set a range for this. Like I don't want to go all the way up to plus 24. That's way too much. So maybe I'll roll down the max value a bit. Maybe I'll pull it up just a touch more. There we go. Plus six is totally fine. And then what I can do is assign another parameter. So next up is the exciter. And I'll just go ahead and click learn plugin parameter. Click on the harmonics knob. Now I've learned both of these. You can even invert them. Like if you want one to go one way and the other one to go another direction, just invert the minimum and maximum sliders and you'll get inverted motion. Uh, although I don't want that for this parameter, I want just sort of a, a bit of the middle range of that knob. Yeah, I think that's fine, just like that. And then I can move on to my auto filter and then I can assign the cutoff and resonance knobs. So just learn plugin parameter cutoff and then learn plugin parameter and then click on resonance. So for cutoff, I want this to be somewhere in the middle all the way to the top. And then for resonance, just somewhere in the middle, but not too far past the halfway point because it'll cause things to self oscillate. So now that I've got the filter in here, I should be able to hear the effect. So I find it really helpful to be able to control the sweep in real time like this and have more tactile control over the effect. So then when you're done setting up the controls, all you have to do is create a new audio track. And then what I'll do is I'll create a send on the white noise software instrument track. So I'll just go to bus eight here. I'll option click on the send amount to set it to 100%. And then I'll just call my audio track white noise effects print and I'll set the input on this to the same bus that I created a send out of, so bus eight. I'm actually gonna mute the track, but I am gonna arm it for recording because we're not going to monitor the signal through the audio track. We're gonna monitor it through the software instrument track, but I do need to make the input on this stereo so we get all those stereo effects from the reverb. And now what you can do is essentially just mute everything in your song, except for the white noise sweep track, and now all I have to do to record this in real time is just press record with the audio track selected. And then once it's recording, click on the software instrument track and move the knob or fader on your MIDI controller to perform in these white noise sweeps. So that was sort of like a medium dynamic. Let me try to do like a really long one. And then let me do like a shorter one. And then when you're all done, you just stop the recording. You can delete this MIDI region because it doesn't really mean anything. I can mute my original white noise track or delete it. And then now I have all of my white noise effects printed to audio. And what I can do is I can go in with my marquee tool or my scissors tool. I can separate each one of these. This one I didn't like so much, but this one I liked. And then what I recommend doing at this point is also adding some fades to these. And then if you want to save these, you can just right click on them and click export as audio files, save them to your library, and then you can pull them into any of your projects as you're working. Now, what I did in the example I played at the beginning of the video was for the very first one, I actually cut off the front end of it to sort of make it just like a crash, like a white noise crash rather than a, a build up sweep. So what I'll do is just snap to the bar here and then I'll use my marquee tool to just trim that up, click on it, and then just go over to the region inspector and just add a real short fade in just to keep any pops or clicks out of the signal. And I've created a white noise crash. Maybe this one can go here. Just try to line that up with the 
peak most energy point right at the bar line, maybe somewhere around there. And then maybe for measure four, I'll bring this short one in here. Same thing, just try to line up the peak energy point with the bar line, and let's see what those sound like. And there you go, that's how you can create your own custom white noise sweep effects in Logic Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you for the support and thanks for watching.